much for your grace, for your mercy, Lord. Thank you so much for this evening that you blessed us, God. And we're here to exalt your name, Lord.
we thank you so much, Jesus, that we can come in the name of God and glorify your name, Lord. There is none like the name of God, and we thank you for that, God, that we have the wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, where we can come and bow and humble ourselves, oh God, where we can come and glorify your name and praise you for who you are. Thank you so much for the name of Jesus, Lord, that you stand stronger, you stand taller, God, and you stand above it all, God. We thank you so much that your name is above every other name. Lord, and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that the name of Jesus is powerful and is strong to do great things, and we thank you for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The price you paid will forever be enough. And the life you gave, yeah, you gave it all for love. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Come see what God has done and lift him up.
talks about the ten lepers, and when I was thinking about saying this short message, I I read about the ten lepers, and uh, I really thought about myself, like, God, you're always there for me anytime I ask you for a favor, you, you're there, and the majority of the time, I was all, I'm like the ten, I'm like the nine lepers who didn't come back, I never, rarely at the time when God healed me or did anything for me, I just went away, barely in the time that I come back to praise him. So today, I ask you, like it says in Psalms 107, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast, for his steadfast love endures forever. So I ask you today that you, were, that you thank God, that you be like that one leper who came back and praised him, Lord. That you came and thanked him for everything. Now, this prayer, you can end it easily just by saying, God, thank you for everything you've done. But today... I ask you, I challenge you that you specify your details, that you say, God, thank you for letting me wake up. Because the majority of us got that privilege. Somebody in the world may not have. So specify. I ask you, I challenge you in this next prayer. Do not make it short and simple, but go all out. Specify what you're asking for. Because throughout all your years, God has been there for you, and you definitely have something to thank for. Amen.
I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Oh, your promise is God Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet Oh God, you've never failed us, Lord Thank you for that, Lord Thank you for that, Lord I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Hallelujah God Jesus you're still enough me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Hallelujah, Lord. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my Every day of my life you have been there, God. You were just a simple prayer away, oh God. Oh, your promises were there, God, right by my side. Hallelujah. And I know that I have a confidence and I can lean on the promises of God. And I can stand on the word that always says yes. Hallelujah. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You 
worship your name, God. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed your promise still stands great is your faithfulness is my confidence you never fail me yet hallelujah god you've never failed us oh god you've never left us behind lord jesus when we turn the word god you're there father you remind us of every promise god and we can stand upon those promises because of your great faithfulness, oh God. We can stand upon those promises because of your great love, oh God. We can stand upon those promises because of your power and your grace, oh God. And we worship your name. We glorify your name for who you are, God. We thank you so much for your love, for your mercy. We thank you so much, Jesus, that you have been there. You have blessed us. You have saved us. You set us free, God. You gave us everything, God. And this is all glory and wonder to you, God. These miracles are from above, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the gift, Lord, of God. Jesus, light of heaven, lover of the lost. Jesus, perfect love, you meet us where we are. You came to us to show the love of God. You came Do I want to be? I give you my 
All to you, oh glory. All to you, the honor, God. All to you, the praise. All to you, thanksgiving, God, not to us, but to your name, God. All the glory and honor, God, belongs to your name alone. For it is you who has done it all for us, God. We recognize that tonight and worship your name for it, Lord. All the glory and wonder overcome my deepest fears. Oh God, our loving Father, you have come to be me here. All the glory.
right now tonight for me to say, I can say this with all safety, with 100% of my mind, I can say this right now, knowing that it's true and that our God is amazing. Amen. Do you guys agree with me? Our God is amazing. I want to read from Deuteronomy 10, 17. Here it says, for the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great and the mighty, the awesome God, who is not harsh or takes no bribes. I think we as people, it's really hard for us to know how great God really is and how awesome and powerful God really is. Just as people, physical people with our physical minds, we have no way to know how big and how awesome our God is. Think about the biggest person you know through sports. Think about the biggest person in sports and politics who's the biggest person in politics. And who is he compared to God? That person is nobody. It's a speck of dust. He will die soon. And maybe his name will be said for a few more years after. But that person is nothing. We, live, we serve a God who's been around for eternity. And he will continue to be around for eternity. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. He sees everything. He's everywhere at once. He hears every single person. And we as people think about us. We are such small people in this world. A few people know our name. A few people will remember us when we die. But we as people, we are so small compared to God. The biggest person is nothing compared to God. The amazing thing is that such a high God loves such small people. We as people, we are so small. But by the highest person in this entire universe, we are loved by him. We are known by him. He listens to us. He cares for us. You know, we... As such small people, being as small as we are, tonight we have this opportunity to serve such a high God. I don't know the intentions what every person came here with. I don't know your intentions. Maybe it's just for some sort of like some time to fellowship with other people, some time to meet new people. But now we are here knowing who we are. Let's humble ourselves, who we are. We are little people before God, but we have this opportunity. We can serve our great and almighty God. Let's make this night, whatever we came here for, let's change that and make it about our great and awesome God. Hallelujah, God. We come Thank before you so today, much. Father. We humble ourselves, God. We know that we are nothing compared to you, God. We are so small, God. But in your eyes, we are everything, Father. You have given your life for us, Jesus. You have cared so much about us, God Almighty, that you decided to give your life for us.
Jesus. We are so thankful to that we have a place there in the heavens, God. You chose us, God, for yourself, Lord. And we are so thankful to you that we are vessels of the living God. That we have this opportunity to praise your name, God. We have this privilege to worship your name, God. To glorify your name, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, God. Hallelujah, we worship your name, God. We bless your name for your grace, to him, God. I am chosen. such a great God and you were able to lift me up from the miry pit God you were able to give me life God you were able to give me strength God you were able to put me on the solid ground so that I could be standing on Jesus God oh it's the name above all names that is worthy it's the name above all names that deserves the glory and the praise God you deserve the glory, and we want to praise your name tonight. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you are, God. Thank you for your love and for your grace. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship your name. He's the name above all names. You are worthy. How great is our God. Sing that one more time. Name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great. So 
worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name, hallelujah, oh God, bless the Lord.
Exalt your name, God. For you are everything, God. Everything comes from you, and everything is because of you, Father. And we want to praise your name for that tonight, God. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I
Lord, tell us to glorify God. Lord, tonight we just want to thank you so much and give you all the glory. God, truly you deserve the praise. You deserve the thanksgiving and all the glory. Shall tonight we come and we humble ourselves before you Lord knowing exactly who we're standing before God we're standing before our God who we in comparison to you are absolutely nothing God we didn't deserve anything Lord we weren't worthy of anything but by your grace God by your love and by your mercy we have been saved God and it's through Christ Jesus not because of our works not because of our wants not because of our will not because we did something good but because you were good because you are mighty because you are powerful because you are great Lord and your mercy endures forever and tonight we want to glorify your name for that God we just simply want to say thank you for that God we just want to exalt your name and praise the name of Jesus because you have done it all for me. Who am I and what have I done to deserve this? Absolutely nothing, God. It is you. It's you who has done it for me, God. It's you who took the cross and you went to the very end, not being ashamed of death, not being ashamed of punishment, not being embarrassed, God, not looking at the pain, but looking at the joy of having us be called your children. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you that I too am called the child of God. We are called children of the living God. I thank you for that, God. I thank you for that, Lord. I bless your mighty name. Lord, let every single heart who is here, God, look here tonight and see Jesus. Let them not see a program. Let them not see songs. Let them not see a group. Let them not see, God, a choir. Let them not see speakers, Lord. But let them look and see Jesus, Father. Lord, our goal is to get into the presence of God. Our goal, God, is to get closer to you, God. Our goal is to just bow at your feet and just say thank you, God, and just praise your mighty name. God, you see everybody who's here tonight, God. Lord, some of us came with, with happy hearts, God, but some of us came with burdens. Some of us are crying, God. Some of us are so far away from you, Lord. Some of us are still in shackles and in chains and bondage, God. 
Some of us, God, are, 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 are just battling, God, today, and they, have, they don't have freedom within them, God. Lord, we don't want to bypass them, God. Tonight is the day, as long as it is called today. Today is the day of salvation, God. Today is the day of the Lord. Today we can receive joy. Today we can receive freedom. And so, Lord, we don't judge them. We don't judge anyone. But, Lord, we want to stand arm to arm, God, shoulder to shoulder, and pray with one another. Pray with each other, God, and ask that the God of heaven might come and bring your freedom upon us, God. That these shackles, these chains, God, would be broken, Lord, so we would see new life, God. And so that when we leave this place, we would not be the same, God, so that your grace and your presence might change us, Lord. I ask this in your name. Let the glory of God come and find us where we're at, God. And let us bless us in our spiritual journey. Lord, bless the youth in the state of Washington, oh God. Lord, our prayer in these times and, and this generation, God, where God is being wiped out everywhere, where the boundaries are being wiped out everywhere, God, where things are becoming normal that should be normal, God. We cry out for the youth of this generation, of this day, God, that you would come with the power of God, that you would come with the spirit of heaven, God, that you would come, with God, with the revival in our heart, God, that you would come with the revival in our life, oh Lord, that you would come with mercy, with strength, and you, you would change us and turn us back to you, oh God. I pray to us as a nation, God. I pray for us, God, as a youth, God. Let us not just waste time around, God, but let us seek for you, God. Let us seek after you, God. Let us encounter with you, Father. And let us see the glory of God here on earth as it is in heaven, oh God. I pray that you might come into each and every one of our hearts, God. Let this night be a night that we remember, Lord, that you are here and that Jesus, you spoke to me personally, God. Lord, the word that will be spoken, God, we dedicate it into your hands. Take this testimony and show us, God, of what things that you do for us today. Lord, we're so thankful for the things that you do for us, God. We dedicate everything into your hands, and into your hands we give ourselves, God. Lead us, guide us, and be with us. In your name we ask you. Amen. Before you sit down, why don't you high-five somebody? Why don't you get to know somebody? Hug somebody, and God bless you. Praise God. Isn't it great to be in the house of God? Can you guys hear me? Yeah? Okay. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, I wanted to put myself in the shortest amount of time as I can because I know we have a lot of gold things going on. But isn't God great tonight? Amen, amen. Hey, um, here's what I want to do. I want to I want to take you guys to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. The ESV translation says the following. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, meaning through Jesus Christ. And once in a while I go to the message translation because it's a little bit, sometimes a little more clear. Check this out. And sing, sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words or action, whatever it may be, be done in the name of the Master Jesus. Thanking God, the Father, every step of the way. Amen. I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about thanking God every step of the way. Amen. When I began preparing for this message, the Lord put on my heart something. The, the very thing that was very alerting my mind at the time was, I felt the Holy Spirit was moving to say, share your personal testimonies. Share what's practical. Share what happened in your life. Do not just make up example, but share the things. So I want to highlight a few things that are very personal. I didn't research this. I'm, uh, this comes from my own life. And I'll take you guys from a some, some few small examples to try to connect you guys, and then I'll take a little more deeper. So the first thing I, 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 I said, I said is this. I do the best I can. I thank the Lord, and I move on. Who's here in school? Okay, good, good. So you guys are going to understand me. When I was in high school, when I was in middle school, I was the type of guy that got 95% or 
And I was like, man. Yeah, I wish. And I was the type of guy to look at my exam and like, man, I could have got two more points. I was that type of guy. And man, I had to go a long ways to learn, to learn to humble myself to say it's okay. It's okay. I got to call, I got to Highline. And my first exam, I thought, I got this and that. Got a 71%. And man, did I cry. Man, did I cry. I was like, what is going on? I am not showing this to my mom. And then university hit. When you get university, you don't have time to cry. For those of you guys in university, <laughs> I'm not trying to scare you guys out, but you do not have time to cry. You just do what you can, and you're like, thank God, and I'm moving on. Because I don't have time to do anything else, but just move on. Those of you guys who are in university know what I'm talking about. And so throughout this time, as I was going from, from, from high school to university, this, uh, this thing became so practical in my life. I do the best I can. I begin thanking God for the, the strength that he gave me to do, and then I begin moving on. And you saw when I, something I began or I started observing as I was putting this message together was a lot of times we focus so much on what we don't have that the very things that we have become worthless or meaningless to us. And we look back and say, I got a 95, but what is that to me? That 5% I couldn't get. And because we couldn't get that 5%, our mind so focused on we couldn't get that everything else is destroyed or ruined our life because we didn't get 5%. So if there's something I could encourage you guys today, when we begin thanking the Lord, when we begin thanking the Lord, what the Lord begins to do is to open up the 95% that we cannot see and to look at the big picture and say, wait, but I still have 95%. The Lord led me in such a way where I, it was a high line, um, where I started, I did the running start. I stayed another year high line, and then I moved, moved on to Seattle University. I got an internship, and, uh, be, and then I graduated, took the state exams, got a job. Even before I graduated, the, that's how the steps was. And, you know, um, I'm happy for the school I went to because the, what the school did was it took care to prepare people to go to, college, to, to get a job. And so early on, maybe like January before I graduated, what I started doing is putting out certain topics, putting out certain, certain uh, workshops, how to get people prepared. They would bring in people from Boeing, from Amazon, and just like, hey, check these guys out, get their advice in. And so I know I'm here sitting there listening. They would bring, bring, uh, bring topics like how to, how to uh, the, the food etiquette, right, how to properly eat before visit high up or high, high up class people. Things like, things like how, to, how to bargain your salary. And, you know, this is one thing that I wasn't good at. You know, we as Christians from the beginning, right, from, from our childhood, we're like, thank the Lord and don't complain and don't do this. So when this topic came, they were teaching me how to bargain my salary. And I'm like, man, I, I don't know what sounded that. But they've done this so much that I'm like, you know what, when I'm in charge, I come let me try it out, see what happens. <laughs> and so here it is. Here, here it is. I get a call from Puget Sound Energy, and they're like, hey, Congratulations, you got a job with us. We're giving you base salary six to three thousand a year, plus a five thousand dollar opportunity for, for going to school while you're working, plus up to ten percent, uh, up to ten percent bonus depending on how good our year does. And here I'm sitting, I'm like, yay, then I'm like, wait, I got a bargain. <laughs> I got a bargain here. And so for two, three days I'm sitting there, how do I start? Where do I bargain? What why do I do this? And, you know, I was in that environment where um, I did electrical engineering. So some of the people that got a job at Microsoft or Boeing and other places, they were getting 60, 70, 80, 90. And so I'm looking at it, like, oh, 63, I have some. It's kind of compared to my friends. I have somewhere to go, you know, how, how much to bargain. So on two, couple, two, three days, I'm sitting there thinking in my mind, like, man, how do I bargain? How do I start wearing this, this, and that? And afterwards, I'm like, forget this. <laughs> I'm not going to bargain. You know, it wasn't until this year I realized. I'm now part of where I, I look over and I help out with, with the people that get hired kind of like I did in the same position. And I look and I realize this year there was about 100, 110 applicants. And of those 110, 110 people, only about six people get the jobs that I got at the time. And I'm looking back and I'm like, God, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Here I am trying to bargain for, what, 25 more dollars? Or two thousand more dollars when there's a hundred other people waiting in line to get the job that I got, and you know what? I began. I just felt so embarrassed before God. Man, how many of us? So many times we're in those situations. We have so much more than everybody else. We're like, man, I still don't have that two thousand dollars. I still don't have that one thousand dollars. You know, I encourage you guys when you guys are looking for jobs, do the best you can, but begin thanking God. Begin thanking God because what you'll see is not only the very things you don't see, but you're going to see things that you already have. 
the things that others don't have, you'll begin seeing the very things in your life. The next thing I want to talk about is I look at myself, I thank the Lord, and I continue improving myself. One of the big things in our society today is a uh, topic of insecurities. I look at myself and I'm like, I don't have this, I don't have this, I'm not like this, I'm not like this. You know, when I was, uh, when I, was uh, began, I began working with teenagers, ages 17, 18, by my side I, uh, I had Vitaly, where Vitaly and I began uh, working together. And man, I miss him. He's not, not, not anymore in our church. Man, I miss him. He was a funny dude, made the scenes, and one of those guys you want to be around. And, um, you know, after we spend time with him, he's a funny dude. He's a funny dude. And so once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there like, man, I wish I was funny as you. You know, <laughs> I, and I say, that, I say that because I realize a lot of us, a lot of us look up, up to certain people in our lives, and we're like, man, I wish I had this. I wish I was like this. I wish I was like this. I wish I was like this. And I wish I was like this. And sometimes some of us can be so caught up on, I wish I had something that we forget that, hey, I'm still a person too. And there's still value inside of me too. And so I want to encourage you guys to think, look at yourself. Begin thanking the Lord. Because when you begin thanking the Lord, you begin looking at your own life. And you begin seeing the value that God placed in your life. By the way, we're all made different. God did not make us to be all the same people. And if you're going to try to be like somebody else, it's going to take so much more effort and the question is even worth putting that effort to be like somebody. Why won't we just begin thanking the Lord for what He has, who He has made us to be? And let me tell you, I'm a, I probably, let me ask you guys this, don't raise your hand. How many of you guys thank, you, thank God for who you are? You might say, look at yourself, man, that's selfish. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, before people, if you're going to show off before people, yeah, you are. But if you're going to stand before God and say, God, I thank you for who you made me. That is not selfishness. That is thanksgiving for God. To God and God accepts that kind of thanksgiving. Yeah. So if there's something that I can begin encouraging you guys today is begin thanking God for who you are. Begin thanking you for God for the plans that he has over your life. And then the very things that you don't see in you, you'll begin seeing you. What else did I put on my <laughs> Another aspect about this topic that I wanted to share, it's a little more sensitive, but some of us may begin looking at uncontrolled situations in your life. Things over which we do not con control. You know, soon people are in that situation, when we have control, things are fine. I can still manage, change a few things up. But when we begin not having control of ourselves, and especially if it impacts us in a negative way, oh man, oh boy, does it hurt us, right? Oh boy, does it hurt us. For the past couple of months, couple of years, a little over a year now, I've been having some health issues that's, on, health issues that's ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. And many times I caught myself, now that I'm thinking back, I used to go in my mom, I still go to my mom's closet. My mom's closet, walk in the closet, a place where, you know, it's kind of isolated. You can walk around, lay around, pray, do anything you want, nobody's going to see you there. That's my place to go. And, and man, many times when it was so, so difficult for me because of my health, I'll go up in my closet and I'll just pray. I'll cry out to oh God, God. And certain times when you just get fed up with those uncontrolled situations, God, until when? And you're crying before God. Oh, sometimes I made so many promises. God, if you're going to heal me, I'm going to read the Bible every day even more than I do. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, why aren't you doing that now? <laughs> but I'm like, no, God, but I'll do more and more and more and more. You know, I begin to, some, some, something interesting is beginning to happen in my life and beginning to observe it. I still have the same situations in my life even as I'm standing here right now. But I realize when you begin thanking the Lord, you begin seeing things that you don't normally see. When you're so focused on the uncontrolled situations in your life, the only thing on your mind is what I can't do. Hardly that do you ever stand back and say, but I still can't do this, I still can't do that, I still can't do that. You know what's interesting? Do you guys remember that Bible verse where it talks about how big the love of God is? How deep, how wide, how high, how, dead, how deep. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know what's interesting? <clears throat> this is not a thought of my own, but our, our uncle, one of my uncles in Ukraine shared this and it really stuck to me. And it really became powerful and actually practical in my life. You know when everything is going perfect in our life. And as if we're on those heights when things are just amazing, things are going great. You know, you're experiencing, or we're experiencing a type of love of God on the heights. A love of God. And you see the love of God on the heights. 
And a lot of times if we begin going through a little bit of the valley, the valley is things that begin difficult. And we turn back and say, God, you don't love me anymore. You don't love me anymore. Why? Because we've experienced how good God is when we're on the top, when things are going well. But you know what's interesting? The love of God is so much and it's everywhere that even at the lowest points, the love of God is still there. And when you're hurting and you're in an uncontrollable situation, guess what? The love of God's still there. And you'll be able to experience the love of God when you're at the lowest point. And trust me, it's totally different. It is totally different when you're up at the height. And when you're sitting there and you're day to day, you wake up and you're like, God, my day is just dependent completely on you. And you experience the love of God in that such a way. Oh, man, it's so much. And you feel God like you've never felt before. In uncontrolled situations, if we take a, take a step back and we th- begin thanking God, not for those uncontrolled situations, but begin taking a step back and realizing what's coming out of it or how God's leading us. God's leading us to trust in Him. God's leading us to, to have more b- longer patience and endure longer. God's leading us to submit to God's will, which at times is so difficult for us to do. We begin to, and then and the times we begin to, uh, to, to kind of see that God has a plan for us. That God, everything is in God's hands. And if you take a step back and look at all those things, those aren't bad things. Those aren't bad things. Those are actually good things. And if you look to the Bible, those are the very things God says that he wants to see in us. And so I... I I'm speaking from experience, and I want to encourage somebody who's going in through unc- uncontrolled situations. Begin thanking the Lord. Begin thanking the Lord because your eyes will be open to certain things you can't see. And this very uncontrolled situation can become one of those things you can get up and say, oh, this too shall pass. The next thing I want to talk about is I look at my friends, I thank the Lord, and I continue to be a better friend. How many of us truly thank the Lord for our friends? God bless you guys. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Wow, that doesn't mean a lot less people. <laughs> when I was, uh, I began uh, with the teenage uh, program. Uh, at one point, pastor, I had a discussion with our pastor, and I'm talking to the pastor. The pastor's like, how are things going? And I was like, everything's going good, except to, out of the 30 students that are supposed to come, only about 20, 22 show up, and he looks at me he's like, that's 67%, dude. <laughs> it's like some, sometimes we get 5% of people attending, attending Sunday evening or Wednesday services. And so one of the things that at that time pastor t- told me, is like, don't focus on the people that didn't come. Focus on the people that are there and begin thanking the Lord, begin working with them. And so a lot of us, some of us, especially in the generation we're living, we can be caught up in the trap. Oh, this person's not my friend. This person's not my friend. This person's not my friend. This person didn't give me attention. Wait, you have two or three people in your life that you're closest to. Begin thanking the Lord's strength in those relationships. And out of those, there'll be other relationships that'll be, gro- that'll be grown. But begin thanking the Lord for the people you have. And begin becoming a better friend. Begin thanking the Lord if you're struggling with relationships. Because in the thanksgivings, the very things you cannot do, you will be able to do. The next thing I want to talk about, I look at God. I thank the Lord. I continue to be like Him. Maybe some of us are sitting today and say, I messed up. I totally blew it. I totally messed up in my life. Could God ever forgive me? Could God ever look at me? Could I ever get off the same way? Guys. That is one of the tactics of the devil. Because he begins narrowing our focus so much to the things we have messed up, to the very things I've done wrong, to the very things that I couldn't do, that we forget about the grace of God, that we forget about the mercies of God, that we forget that Jesus is still the Son of God, that we forget the fact that Jesus still died on the cross, that he left the heights of heavens, came down, humbled himself, got to the lowest of the lowest and said, hey, you're still my son and my daughter. And so if you're sitting maybe in a situation where you're sitting there and thinking, I'm never going to be able to get up. I'm never going to be the same. Hey, begin thanking the Lord. And begin thanking the Lord for who He is, who God is. And when you see who God is and realize who God is, go after Him to improve like He did. I was sitting in the choir right now, and as we were we praying, the Lord pushed me to, push, to, to touch one more aspect, probably the last aspect. There may be some of us today here, who is looking at yourselves, who is looking at yourselves, and maybe you're sitting and thinking, man, I, I try to hold myself pure. I try to be clear, 
to be, to be as my parents, as my church taught me. I try to not be like everybody else to follow this, this, and that. And maybe that is the very fact that's leading you to tears. Maybe that is the very things that's leading you to, 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 to not be happy over your life. Maybe you're sitting there like, man, like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I, and I held myself from those things. I held myself from those things, but, but look where I've gone. Everybody's so much more ahead of me. I'm so behind. Hold on. Begin thanking the Lord for your purity. Begin thanking the Lord that you haven't touched sin. Begin thank we're all sinners, but you guys, I'm talking about things that could have been avoided. Begin thanking the Lord for his protection over your life, that he protected you in a special way. Listen to me. The Bible says that those people are a special type of people. Look at me. Tell me about Anna. Anna from the Old Testament. She sat down and was bitter and crying, crying. If you studied the Old Testament, to not have kids at the time meant you either cheated with somebody or meant you were cursed. And she's sitting there, I don't have a child. I don't have a child. I don't have a child. She's crying. She's crying. But she did not know that in her womb would be a guy, would be a man that everybody in Israel would know that he's the man of the living God. Tell me about John and Elizabeth. Elizabeth was the same way. She hated herself because people were mocking that she didn't have children. But came a point in time where she began to rejoice. Why? Because God had a special plan and in her womb was another man who the Bible says that above all men, this man will be the highest types of men. And so if you're crying or things are different in your life and you focus so much that I'm different than anybody else, begin thanking the Lord because the Lord has a big special plan over your life. Can we all stand up today? I had it on my heart to do this. We'll have two prayers. Right now, this first prayer, we'll do the following. Can we just forget about every needs, every wants, everything on the side? Can we spend some time thanking God, just thanking God? I don't know if you guys have tried this at home. This is one of the hardest things to do because you're so used to God give me. God bless, God bless, God bless. Can we stand this prayer right now and just thank God? Thank God. Thank God. Just thank God. What? I don't know. I don't know what's in your heart. I don't know what's going on. Thank God for something genuine in your life. You know, something that helps me, why I love when I sing certain songs, there's certain phrases that has so much weight and depth. For example, one of my favorite songs, I Know My Redeemer Lives. When I say that phrase, it means so much to me, because there's so much content behind that, those words in my life. Maybe you repeat those kind of phrases that really mean special to you. We sing a lot of songs, there's a lot of good phrases. Maybe there's certain things that stood out. I am who you say that I am, right? I am a child of God. Proclaim those things in your life. Let's begin right now in this prayer. Just thank God. Just thank God. Don't ask Him anything. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much for what you do for us, God. Thank you so much for grace, for mercy, for love, for joy, for peace, for all your spirit. Thank you for mercy, for love, for Thank you so much for your grace and your love. Thank you so much for your kindness, God. Thank you so much for your forgiveness. Thank you so much for the cross. Thank you so much for redeeming me, redeeming my life, redeeming the atoms of pit of hell, God. Thank you so much, God, we thank you for this day, God. I thank you so much, God, for this night, God. 
It was great to be in the house of God. It was great to be in the presence of God. It was great to be God in a place, God, where you're in the magnified, God, where you're worshiped, God. And we thank you for tonight, God, you that so you visited us, that you've touched us, God, in a special way today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. I bless your name today, God. I thank you for youth, God. I'm very happy for the many people that came today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah God, that in this young generation, God, there are still those, God, who are serving you, God. Hallelujah, come out of heaven Thank again. You so much, Lord, my prayer to you is that you may God accept the praise today. Yes. May, you, may your name be glorified, worshiped, honored, praised. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus, I ask you. Amen. We all, always have um, an altar call or maybe special needs. Um, and one of the things that I was also in my heart to do was if there's somebody that's going through something or it needs just support, and just has this thing. It's hard for me to thank God. We want to praise God together, but we also want to encourage you. We also want to pray together. There's leaders, guys and girls ready to pray. So let's continue praying for a few more minutes. And if there's somebody that just needs strength, we're not going to ask what's going on. But if there's just somebody that says it's hard for me to give thanks in this moment right now. And somebody we needs, and you guys need support. We have the whole, right, the whole, the whole audience here. We have the whole choir here. We're here to, to support. We're here to strengthen. Let's continue praying. And if you need that special need, go ahead and come to the altar. Our altar is open.